Animation is hard. It takes blood, sweat, and lots of tears to do. The worst part of it all, it's also hard to get into with lots of gatekeepers. You browse the web, searching for ways to make your stickman move. All you can find on YouTube is two hours of Johnny yes. talking in a monotone voice, perfect for sweeping, or Jerry asking to check out their workshop of Raid Shadow Legends. I don't know any of them. What tools do I use? Where do I run without sweeping? Why is it so expensive? How? How in general? Look no further. This video is for you. Yes, you. I'll be using Adobe Fresh, I mean Animate to show you the basics. Don't ask me how to get it for free. But before starting, here are some things that can help you. 1. A drawing tablet. Don't draw with a mouse unless you're a psychopath. Number 2. A timer. If you got something tomorrow like surgery which is important, animate later. And last but not least, practice. Your first work will always be bad, and I mean bad bad. Like anything in life, practice makes perfect. But before that, smash right and sub and I'll be your friend in real life. I mean come on, let's check the door. Do it. Do it. Okay. Let's begin. How did I enable? This tutorial will be broken down into two parts. The first part will be about Adobe Anime itself and all its tools, and I'll be covering the basics for newcomers new to this program. The second part will be about animation and the different methods you can do it in. I will post the video link in the description when it comes out. Let's begin. Open up the menu and let's create a new file. Adjust the height and the width to the video aspect ratio based on the website. And you know what, I'll put some of that on the screen right now. Remember, not to get this wrong or three things could happen. The first one is lower resolution and your video will like shit. The second one, uh, parts of your video will be cut out and the worst part, you can't even post your video at all. Frame rate or FPS is the number of images displayed on screen per second. Personally, I use 24 as I heard years ago, that's what anime is animated in. But ultimately, it's up for you to decide, because the higher the frame rate, the longer it is and the harder it is to animate. I'm looking at you 60fps 4k. Let's quick create and now you are in the workspace of Adobe Animate. There is the stage, tools, timeline and properties window. When you open a file, you always start with a black mouse, and this is known as the selection tool. Basically, it allows you to select anything, and this will be important in editing your drawings. Also, you can click out of the object to deselect it. But first, let's save so that you don't lose any progress. Remember to always save multiple different copies of the file as Adobe Anime has issues with autosave where it will corrupt your file if your computer blue screens. F in the chat, I was a whole video to that. Keep our shortcuts are here if you want to edit yours at the start. Let's zoom out to see the whole stage. With the rectangle tool, I can create a square by holding shift. I want it to be green and have no stroke by Shrek. If you want other shapes, right click on the toolbar and that shows everything. You can play around with the shapes right here in the shapes option. If you do not like the shape, you can edit it by selecting it. Now, open your transform window and you are able to change the square's height, width, and rotation but if you hate typing use the free transform tool and adjust it yourself now that's done let's copy and paste this square all over the stage i'll swing the first one to make space for the rest this is timmy Johnny and Rob, part of the square family. Let's learn about the undo function. Let's change the color of the square. You can change it at the start, but there are also another two ways you can do this. 
first is selecting the square with the selection tool and adjusting the color based from the tools, properties or colors window. The other is the paint bucket tool and you can pick your cover first before using it on the square. Adobe Animate also has two types of gradients. You can select them via the cover tool and adjust their properties in there. Wow. Rock fill allows you to set the position of the gradient. You can also adjust the gradient based on the gradient transform tool, which is actually very similar to the free transform tool. Let's go to brushes. You can adjust all nice. their options in the properties window. There are 5 different brushes in Adobe Animate. Unlike other programs, these brushes paint specific parts of the stage. Paint normal paints over everything. Paint fill paints over objects on the stage. Paint behind paints behind objects. Paint selection paints on what you're selecting. And last but not the least, paint inside paints inside of close objects. The ones that I use the most personally are paint normal for Ryan work and paint behind for highlights and shadow. You can also rotate the stage for better angles. If you want to erase those strokes from the brush tool, you are in luck. The eraser tool is very similar to its friend. Properties are very similar to the brush tool, with minor differences. Erase normal erases everything. Erase fill erases objects on the stage. Erase vines erases vine from the vines too. Erase selected fill erases what you're selecting. And last but not the least, erase inside erases inside of close objects. Now it's time for the timeline. This might get a bit confusing, so buckle up and let's get right into it! This window allows you to adjust all your frame rate options from timing to effects. But first, what is a frame? A frame is uniquely defined by a combination of the image to be displayed and the time the image wow. is to be displayed. What? Basically, it means an image at any time in an animation. We can break this down into several different types of frames, but that'll be for next video, go watch that instead. For today, I will be focusing on the frame system in Adobe Animate. You are able to add three types of frames into your timeline. Keyframes, rank keyframes, and frames. Keyframes duplicates your previous keyframes, in which my case is this ugly square. Rank keyframes, as his name implies, creates a new empty keyframe. Frames make your keyframes last longer on screen. You can move, copy and paste, and create frames in your timeline. There is a lot of freedom when animating. It's all up to you to create what you want within this program. If you want to watch your animation, you can drag this blue line or click the play button. You can also group your animation over here. Onion Skin allows you to see your previous and next keyframes. Use that as reference for your animations. You can also adjust the settings for it in the advanced settings. Besides timing, you can add a few effects to your frames. Just select your keyframe and we have cover effects and filters. For cover effects, there are brightness, tint, advanced, 
N Alpha. Por viertes, der Gro. B. Drop Shadow. Bebe. Gradient Gro. Gradient Bebe. And I just cover. Next is the year function. Have you ever run into a scenario where your scene recalls more than one object on screen, but they overlap together and it meshes into one ugly prop? Never you're watching this video to learn about animation, blah blah blah, I don't care. To solve this issue, Let's create a new layer. Add a square to it and drag. Voila, no collision. What happens is that these two layers do not interact with each other. Besides the positioning on screen, which you can adjust in the timeline. Visibility and walking your layers are here too. Sound in animation is very important. It sets the pace your animation will be in, so pick YC. I'm not going to talk about where you can get these sound clips just in case of this, but let's assume that one magically appears on your screen. In Adobe Animate, all you have to do is drag your file into your stage, and it's Pow. in. This sound clip will attach itself to the keyframe you're currently on. When this keyframe ends, the sound creep ends. To avoid this issue, I like to create a new layer specifically for sound. Extend the layer so your sound creep can be played. Bada -ba. God damn my ears! Sounds like it's not very happy. The sound ember word will fix that. Instead of typing the exact decibels for its friends, Adobe Animate gives you a graph that you can pull to increase or decrease the volume. You can also click on points here, and this will make the volume slowly increase or decrease. Let's play the creep again. Perfection. This video is done. Let's export it to MP4 format and watch all its gory. There are other formats you can export the video in. But for now, click video slash media, check all these settings, and we are done. If you got here without Adobe Media Encoder, it is available at a cheap price of $52.99 per month. Wow. Sorry those who got this far without this program. Anyways, the video has finished rendering. How's the final product? That's it. I taught you almost everything I know about Adobe Animate. Timestamps below in the description if you want to reference any specific tool in this program. But I'm done with this video. Holy moly. Part 2 will come out eventually. Binky promise. I scraped so much content and rewrote the script too many times to count. Our news animations will be shown after this. If you made it this far, you the real MVP. Like, subscribe, share this video with friends, yada yada. Peace! You know, I actually write moons. Oh, then. Moons not the stars. Oh, then. It's yeah, a rock. moons. You know, the no, stars are how the earth is red. Ahem. Hey, hey, kids. Ever heard about animation? Yep. What's up? Bro! Where is this space? I mean, what can this space for me and my homies expect some sound effect? Are we gonna beat your mother? Hasta la vista, baby. Who's next? Me. Hello there. Today, I am here to answer the most important question in life. What is animation?